One of the things uh, I've been messing about with for an age is partial variables. This idea has been around for a long time. Acert's done a tutorial on it uh, showing how he, he does things. But the way it's done most of the time is you have like the digits and whatever sorted out for you and you're kind of just locked into that or it's done with binary and you have every single one defined and it has a specific amount of thermo used but here it works a little differently so you're given a template and then you just plug in the right numbers uh, which I'll show you how to do later so that that gets you the the data you want or saves the data you want. Okay so I've got this demo to explain how numbers work. So I would just skip this because you don't really know to, need to know how normal numbers work but you do need to know how binary works because that's what's, what I'm actually going to show you how to use with the variables. So understanding this level of stuff means that you're able to understand how to do this partial variable binary stuff. If I play time it's going through and adding up these numbers. So it's adding one every second and you can see the value down there. Um, and this is using just normal, um, the normal regular mathematics numbering system. So you can see, uh, so when it starts off at zero and then adds one and adds one and adds one and goes through the digits. And then when it gets to nine and adds one, it resets this to zero and adds one to the tens column. Um, and then if we uh, if we speed it up, then eventually it'll add to the hundreds column and so on. So every time w one of the digit slots uh, becomes full, then it resets and, and it needs to add one, then it resets and adds one to the next one. Um, and that's how numbers work. This is called base 10 because there are 10 different digits, 0 through 9. Those are the different digits you can have in each slot. So when you see a 4 here, it means that this has gone through 4 times. It's had 1 added to it 10 times, and then that's happened 4 times over. So this means it's 40. We've added one a total of 40 times, because uh, this is in the tens column and stuff. So over here, that thing has gone through, if we let it run through. So this one has got to one, if we pause it there. That means that uh, this one has gone through one complete time, which means that has gone through 10 times. Uh, and this has gone through 10 times for each of those 10 times, which means 100 times. Even though this digit is just one, that digit is four, that digit is two because it's moved over one place this is like ten times that one and that is ten times that one which is ten times that one so then you get one hundred and four forty and two so if we had a value of one and we wanted to shift it over a number of columns with normal base ten uh, values then how do we do that well if you times it by ten instead of it being one it will be a ten which is a 1 in the tens column and a 0 in the units column. So then we bring this power up to the column we want, which is 1. And uh, 10 to the power of 1 is 10. You can see down there. So then our 1 times 10 is 10, which is a 1 in the ones in the tens column, uh, which is like the first position. This is like the 0 position, and then that's the first position. That makes understanding this a bit better, because we want the first position here, so we give it a 1 in there. Uh, and then if we want it in the hundreds column, we can do 10 times 10, which would be 10 to the power 2, which is 100. So then our 1 is multiplied by 100 and gives us 100. And this, is, this can be any value you want. So if this was 6, it would be 6 times 100, and we've had, we'd have 6 in the hundreds column in the second position. So let's skip to binary. How does binary work? So now each of these selectors only has two slots. There are two digits. So if I play time, you've got zero and you've got one. And then when, when it is at one and needs to add another one, it will reset that column and then add one to the next column. 
So if we play time for a bit, then that's added to there and then that goes up. And then when that gets full, it adds to there. So it's it works just like um, the base 10 normal counting system where you have different columns, but they mean different things. So just as with uh, base 10, the first column is worth one times whatever it is. But then the next column is worth two times because it's gone through this two times and then added there. So for every one over here, it's we've added one twice over here. So if I add one, one, two times, this one says one. So this column is worth two per, per number it is. And that column is worth one. If I keep going, three, four, then this column is worth double that column, which is what worth double that column. This is worth four, this is worth two, and this is worth one. So what number is one zero zero in binary? It's four. And then if we add one over here, what is one zero one? That's that's four plus one is five. And then you go on here. And then this is worth four and this is worth two, so it's six in total. So it adds it adds up the same way, but you have to kind of convert it back into normal numbers to to kind of understand what's going on. So if we started off with a value one, but then we wanted to shift it over to this column, then we'd have to times it by two and then times it by two again. And then to uh, get the right uh, value. Just as with regular counting, you'd times it by 10, and times it by 10, but we're in base two, so we times it by two, times it by two. So this is uh, the same as is uh, using powers in mathematics. So if I get a calculator, if you set this one to two, uh, to the power of two, and see what the value is, then that makes four, which is this column here. So the power that you raise it to is actually how many columns you skip over. So then to get our, our one into this position, we've got our one, and then we multiply it by this thing over here. So if we just multiply by this value. So the first column, you can think of it as um, m multiplying by the power of zero. Uh, because the power of zero is actually always one. If we uh, see what that is, it's always one. So that won't make any change to which column it's in. But then if we up this to one, then that's the base number that you started with, which is two. Which means multiplying by two would get you to the first column, which is the, the power there. If you wanted to move it to the second column, then you'd give it a power 2, which would be 2 times 2, which would be 4. So then times your 1 by the 4, and then you get into this column. So I'm going to build a binary number from scratch. So I've got a switch, and I'm going to get the first position, which would be multiplied by 1, because it's still in the units. So let's just set this to... Well, that's going to be 0. And that's giving us one down here. So then we, that's going to be times. And you just multiply that one by the power of that first column. So plug that into a value slider and that gives us one. But then we want the next position. So let's do that for the next position. And the next position will be one across. So we'll multiply it by two, uh, the two to the power one to get the first position. And then let's see what that is. So that's two. One times two is two. Now let's copy that down there. And then we want this to be the third position. So let's just move that. Think of that as the zeroth position, the first position, second position. So let's set this to two. And then we multiply that by the one and we get four. So times two, times two, and we get four. Uh, so now we can have, if we turn that one off, then we can add these up. If we add all these up, then we get 1 plus 2 plus 4. So that will give us a total of 7. So 111 one, one 
gives us a value of 7. Now if we turn off that middle one, then we only have 1 plus 4, which is 5. So 1, 0, 1 is 5. So now we can easily test these different numbers. That's a 1, a 2, but then if I have uh, 1, 1, 0. Uh, in binary, you actually count from the largest to smallest. So then this is, this is 1, 1, 0, and it's worth 4 plus 2, which is 6, and so on. So now we understand that, we can go over and look at how to cram lots of data into limited space. I'd like to thank Kel Bjorns, X Cantaloupe, Kolvitzer, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.